This is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Today we'd like to show you two things. One, to get a um, screen capture uh, that can be used as a graphic to place into perhaps your uh, open office document uh, when generating documents. Um, and also though, to introduce to you uh, a graphic um, editor uh, that's a little more sophisticated than color paint uh, called GIMP. Um, we're not going to have time to go through all of the features of GIMP. It's, it's just too big. It's, it's very much like Photoshop. Um, but I um, want to show you um, simple examples and how I would personally use uh, uh, GIMP uh, for graph simple graphic uh, editing. If you're interested in just doing simple drawing, I recommend using the Color Paint um, application, which we have a YouTube video for. But if you want to get a little more fancy, then uh, I recommend uh, GIMP. GIMP is just G-I-M-P. It represents a graphical image manipulation program. You may find that when you use open source programs that uh, some of these programs have weird names, like Audacity for sound recording, the play on words, and that's because programmers tend to have a little bit of a sense of humor. And sometimes you can see this in the, uh, in the applications that they represent. Um, to do a, uh, I want to do a demonstration of taking uh, some, uh, some screenshots here. Uh, for example, if I wanted to take a screenshot of my desktop, you just simply uh, press the print screen button. It's normally located up above the uh, arrow keys, up above the uh, group of keys like home and hand and delete. And it's usually marked P T R N T or P R T S C R for print screen or just print itself. If I press enter here, it brings up a dialog box and it really gives some options here, which is kind of interesting, a little bit different than the Microsoft Windows or at least early versions of Windows I know I've used. Uh, it gives the option to um, both copy to a clipboard but also having the ability to save as a file. So if you want to go in and do, uh, bring in that file as a, uh, for editing. Right now I'm just going to cancel out of this. Um, if you're interested in just taking a screenshot of, um, of a particular window, which has the advantage then that you don't have to crop the image, uh, then uh, you can press the control print, print screen button. Uh, sometimes on Linux systems it's all print screen, very much like in Windows. Um, but right now in the computer lab here we weren't able to do that, so we just simply set the keyboard shortcut to control print screen. Just as an aside here, how would one do this? Well, you can go to uh, Preferences, you can go to uh, uh, Keyboard Shortcuts, uh, and you can uh, modify the shortcut key. You really shouldn't be doing this in this lab, uh, or you're going to get a lot of angry people here. But here, uh, for example, take a screenshot of, of a window I've set to Control plus print. So I guess I'm, showing, I'm telling you that if you have a Linux system at home and you're getting annoyed because the key shortcut keys sometimes aren't the same as in Windows, you can simply modify them so they are. So what we do right now is uh, we're just going to open up the uh, calculator program and we're going to take a screenshot of that actual open window. So I press the uh, control print screen and you notice that uh, we have the option actually of copying to the keyboard or actually saving to the file. We're just going to use this default file name and place it into documents. Remember it's important to save into the appropriate area. Oh, actually into pictures. We'll do pictures instead. Good to save into the appropriate area. Now in this way we can close the application. We'll go into our pictures subdirectory, pictures folder and um, bring it up um, for actual editing. Instead of, uh, remember we were talking about document centric, so we have the ability to actually bring up the file as opposed to launching the application and loading the file inside that application. And that'll make our lives a little bit easier. So here we go into pictures, and there is the screenshot in calculator. Screenshot, and we're gonna right click onto this and select open with, and we're gonna select the GIMP image editor and it'll launch in. It's a very very powerful editor. It's like Photoshop. And when it comes in we'll, you notice that there are several uh, windows uh, that are open. Each window um, has a particular purpose. 
And if these things get in the way, we can actually move them out of the way. But we should have them open in order for us to uh, uh, use them as tools as required. On the left hand side is the toolbox where we actually select our tools for drawing. Um, in the middle is the actual viewing area itself, which is the, where the calculator is. And this uh, rightmost one are for layers, and we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to put it out of the way. We can, um, some interesting features that we can uh, use um, with, the, uh, with the drawing area. Uh, down at the bottom right hand corner, actually um, see uh, that there's an area that if you click and drag onto it you can actually change the orientation or location of where the particular drawing is. Let's for, let's, um, for a demonstration uh, uh, just uh, take out a certain portion of this uh, picture. In fact, uh, we're just going to concentrate actually on the keys themselves uh, as opposed to the display window and the menu uh, window of the calculator. So we go to the toolbar and we select the select tool. And we go down and we're going to click and drag onto the area in which we have, uh, which we choose to select. And once we release, you will notice uh, moving uh, dashes. These are referred to uh, as the marching ants indicate that this is your act of selection. And once you've selected the area, then we're going to go to Edit, Copy, and Edit, and not just paste, but paste as a new image. And another window will come up just with our selected keys. And in this case, then we can save it. So I'm going to say File, Save As, save it in the Pictures folder. And we'll just give it a new name, call it Calculator Buttons.png. That's kind of interesting. We have the ability to save as different file types uh, in GIMP. But an interesting feature is if we do type in the extension, it's smart enough to know that that is the file type that we want to save under. And we click on to save. little tricky here because the docking station's coming up. Three times the charm. And we click on save again just to um, make the confirmations. And now this copy or screen capture is actually saved under pictures. What can we do with this? Well, we can do quite a bit actually. We can, um, we can uh, modify this. For example, under the tools directory, we could transform transforming there's a lot of interesting things we can do one one that's noticeable is to scale that means to uh, reduce or increase the, uh, the uh, picture just as a, a suggestion you should never take a small picture and try to make it larger you'll lose the detail but on the other hand if you have a quite a large picture and you want to scale it down you can do that by clicking on to scale now we can actually move to the object click and drag um, and it'll show the uh, new the uh, proposed uh, scaled image as a preview and if we click on to scale then it will actually scale to that size. You can always go edit undo if we're not happy with what we did. Another interesting thing is we can use filters. Uh, filters allow us to change the appearance so to um, distort or to modify the um, picture. For example if we go into uh, the artistic area and we go to the impressionist select some sort of um, background appearance and there are a lot that are there let's try embroidery and click on OK then you'll notice that the appearance has been slightly distorted and you can be doing that for artistic purposes Or undo it if you're not happy and experiment with the other types of filters. There are quite a few that are there. We're not going to worry about distorting it uh, at this point. Interested right now in what we can do, for example, we can uh, bring the image into a document. So I'm just going to open up uh, OpenOffice uh, Writer, the word processor.
And I'm just going to type in some text here. Here is my window screen capture. And now I'm going to insert it by uh, clicking on insert by picture from file. You can have the ability to scan from the photocop from this printer scanner as well. In this case we go to our home directory and go to the pictures subfolder and I'll bring up the calculator button file and there we go. There's a lot we can do here with the image. We can click and drag it to move it, resize it by uh, clicking and dragging on the handles. If we double click it, we bring up the picture quality. So there's a lot of things that we can do with this image. Select the wrap if we want the wrapping to be tight. In other words, do we want the text to come tight within the picture, or do we want the left and the right to be reserved just for the picture itself? And options to set the margins as well. Many things that are available here. We can uh, select um, background colors if the image was transparent. We can go to borders. We can set a line around it. A lot of people don't realize that we could add in drop shadows uh, to uh, further uh, emphasize the picture. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to pick a drop shadow that goes to the bottom right hand side. And click on OK. And there we go. So we're just giving that image an extra bit of uh, uh, appearance. Can play around with the line sizes many many things here that are available. We can play around with the pictures. There's probably areas where we can add in captions as well if required. So this uh, application is very 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 useful. We can also um, add in layers. We're not going to really talk about that in this uh, in this uh, a particular YouTube video, uh, but you can add in uh, separate layers uh, to do more artistic um, editing, uh, such as masking, uh, superimposing images into the background. Um, what's interesting with this is you can uh, actually um, animate a, a particular uh, picture. Um, these are referred to as animated GIFs, and the GIMP uh, utility allows you to do that. Uh, so if you create enough uh, layers, um, you can actually uh, create your own animations. For example, switching over to the next screen, you will see actually an animation here for news at the cottage read Second Depot Times. Well, that's a little joke because Second Depot is a lake where our family uh, has our cottage, and that picture is an actual picture of a raft. And it was brought, it was cropped and brought into GIMP and uh, running, I, I believe it was the um, artistic uh, filter, impressionist uh, embroidery, uh, to make it look like that. And uh, layers were added in to add in for each layer a uh, separate uh, line of text. So in this way, it's just um, advertising an imaginary newspaper for a cottage, just for the fun of it. This is the thing that's very important, is um, take the time to play around, play around and have fun, because you're really at this point only limited by your imagination. This is the ABIT department wishing you happy volunteering and don't be afraid to experiment. Talk to you later.